Okay, I think I'm going live now. Um, just gonna wait a couple of seconds to get a confirmation. Um, hey everyone, just drop me a message in the chat if uh, the audio is working just fine and the uh, image quality also is working just fine or uh, decent, let's say. Let me just um, rescale these a little bit. That I'm going to be covering this image uh, today. Quality is good, quality is good. Okay, uh, well, uh, it's been some time since uh, we've done a live stream. Uh, we've been really focusing hard on getting Dash 1.2 out and then immediately starting on uh, 1.3 uh, and then 1.4 uh, and also 1.5 which i'm going to be talking about but uh, there's a lot of uh, really cool things in the works so uh, today's format is going to be different from uh, the last two live streams where you know i dive into the creation of an environment and show you the ins and outs of all the dash workflow. What I wanted to do today is kind of a shorter one, and I'll just be going through the uh, different features of uh, dash 1.2, and also talk about uh, you know how they work, uh, showcase them live, and uh, then talk, uh, really highlight the why of uh, the feature themselves and how you could use them in various uh, use cases and whatnot. And I'll then talk about the other upcoming features as well. And uh, would love to hear, of course, about uh, where you feel like maybe we're doing some features that you just don't care about, or perhaps uh, you really want us to prioritize specific ones. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, let's get on with the program. So I have a comment from uh, Leonardo Breedy. Uh, where are you from? You know what? That's a complicated question. I'm like mixed three African countries and one French country. So it's like uh, it's complicated. Uh, but I'm currently in uh, Sweden and uh, most of the team is pretty much scattered around the world. Uh, we have some engineers based in Hungary. Our CTO, uh, Costantino, is in Vietnam. Uh, it's all over the place. Uh, Josh Powers, the marketing guy, is in the United States and so on. So, okay. Uh, the first one uh, that I thought I would start with is basically uh, UE 5.0 to 5.3.2 support. This one is uh, kind of obvious. Uh, not uh, It would be too costly for me to run multiple Unreal Engine instances during a live stream, but you get the idea. Dash now works on all these different versions of, of Unreal Engine uh, 5. I think we had some uh, kind of weird material related issue on 5.0, uh, not on 5.1, 5.2, and 5.3. Uh, so for one point, uh, the next release, which is slated for next week, uh, Dash 1.3, we want to make sure that we double check the material work and whatnot. So if you're one of those users who still uses uh, Unreal Engine 5.0, we'd love to hear from you. Is there something that's off or is it all good? Uh, the second one, which is where the showcase begins, would be Surface Scatter 1.2. We have a lot of cool things in the works for this tool. Um, but for this release, we wanted to start with the basics. First of all, uh, vertex color masking. Uh, we know that that's been a constant request since we started the development of this tool. And the idea behind it is you have a mesh in your scene. And uh, well, not this dude. Let's make a plane. Like I'll just write a dense plane. This is also a new feature that you can write in uh, uh, that you have in Dash 1.2, you can just type dense plane and it's going to make a dense plane or dense cube or dense sphere or whatever. Uh, the alternative being a slightly lower res uh, polygon. If we go to the wireframe, you'll see it's relatively dense. And um, I'll click on the content library icon. I'm going to type 3D plants. Actually, I'll type uh, grass patch instead. And then I'll just drag and drop one of these here and uh, scatter on selected or scatter here since our mouse uh, is over it anyways. And uh, yeah, the uh, kind of the overall workflow, you know, it's uh, you 
adjust your parameters. Uh, by the way, I wanted to give a shout out to our programmer, uh, Ilgar, who at the last minute implemented this feature, uh, uh, kind of like the Blender slider drag, where if you drag your slider, the cursor disappears. And when you release, it's, it, the cursor stays where you left it last time. The older version of Dash, you know, you would sometimes move the cursor here. You have to go back and do it again. So a small but very important life-saving uh, future, uh, I would say. Uh, actually, let me switch to the uh, path tracer uh, because I'm I'm a sucker for that. And then I'll just select this material and drag and drop it on the surface. And uh, I'll close the content browser for now. Um, let's see. Do I need this panel? I think perhaps to just increase the value a bit like that. And I'll adjust the material, um, just making it slightly darker. Um, let's see. Contrast. Yeah, that works. So uh, back to our first feature uh, showcase, vertex uh, coloring. First of all, uh, before you jump to vertex coloring, it's important to understand that Unreal Engine has different type of meshes on which you can do vertex color. Uh, the only one, uh, as far as I know, being uh, static meshes. And a static mesh is an object that exists in the uh, in your project in the content browser, and you know it because it's written right here, static mesh. Uh, on the other hand, you have other type of meshes called procedural meshes. So this plane, for example, is a procedural mesh, and uh, you know it because you know they have the procedural mesh component right here. And uh, the reason why it's a procedural mesh is because Unreal has this modeling tool and uh, modeling, 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 somewhere here. And uh, effectively, what uh, they wanted to do was create a very flexible um, geometry type that you can easily edit and whatnot. And so that's the reason why they have that type. Unfortunately for us, you can't do vertex painting live on these meshes. And the solution then becomes, uh, you just have to bake the procedural mesh. Uh, or convert it to a static mesh. Now there is a process in Dash, you literally just write bake, and then you have this operation, procedural to static mesh. You click on it, it takes a few seconds, depending on the complexity, and then it does the job. If you create a terrain with our create terrain action, the terrain here is also a procedural uh, mesh. And thanks to that, you can select this slider, and just drag it to increase or decrease the scale. So it gives you that flexibility. But once you're done with it, we usually recommend the following. You select your terrain and you go here and then you type bake and then you hit enter and it's gonna bake your terrain. That means the terrain won't be editable anymore, but you will have, uh, uh, you'll be able to put nanite on it, for example, which is currently not possible for procedural meshes. And most importantly, these objects, uh, procedural meshes are incredibly heavy in your scene like if you have too many of them in your level uh, they're going to make saving much slower than it usually is last minute features are the best yes indeed they are the best and uh let's see we're going to go to here and then mesh paint and uh, with our plane selected i'll just go to paint mode here let's see i'll do rgb i'm just going to paint on one channel like the red channel. I'll do that. I have to double check why it's not uh, previewing the color. Actually, let me also go back to selection mode. I'll select the grass and I'll open the surface scatter tool. And then I'll just uh, go in full screen, go all the way down, go to vertex color masking, which is where we find a new feature. And then we'll check red and yeah, there you go. So now I'll just go back and I'll start. To, actually, I can press F10 to have a minimized view with the top bar still visible. So with the plane selected, um, I can go back here, paint, and then oh, invert. And then I can just start painting where I want to have my uh, grass. And it all happens like in real time, right after you release your brush. So pretty cool and really fast uh, workflow. Let's just clear. Let's see. 
Let me do that. And uh, the cool thing here is you have access to multiple channels. Um, so if I were to um, remove all vertex colors, um, seems like didn't update there. There you go. And then let's say I'm just going to paint uh, invert. I'm just going to paint like here. I can then select the other channel green and decide that I'm going to add a specific color here as well that dictates like some other scatter tool and what have you. And uh, you have all the different channels and then you have kind of different uh, blending modes. Actually, we should rename this to blending mode. Uh, yeah, it blending mode uh, for all the vertex colors. You have the mode add, which will just add uh, the scatter wherever you added some vertex colors. Let's cancel that. And then you have remove, which will remove where you have the vertex color uh, difference, which does a difference between where you have and where you don't have. And then intersection, um, which gives you this really nice uh, result. And uh, so this feature, uh, if you ever are in a situation where you have a terrain, for example, and you want to scatter, let me go back to the regular rendering mode, and you want to create like a nice path or just have grass and whatnot in specific areas, to me, this is a really great feature. But uh, the best part about it is that you can actually use it on uh, static meshes, basically. Um, so uh, usually, if you're using Unreal Engine's, um, what do you call it again, the uh, brush tool or something, you just can't do that. Uh, you do have the ability to paint through terrain weights to decide where your scatter is going to be and what have you. But uh, for me, being able to just go here and add that as a surface, yeah, that looks ugly. Let's, uh, let's, not, let's not get too lazy here. Let's actually drag and drop this guy and scatter here. And give it a sec, it'll open that panel. And uh, I'll just lower the scale like that and then increase the value quite a bit. Um, lower, it, lower it again, because that's still too much. Yeah, so basically we can select this rock and vertex paint to decide where we want and where we don't want to have some uh, vegetation uh, scattered. And uh, if I go here, selection mode, mesh paint, and then paint uh, with the red channel. I'll just paint some color here. And as I did before, I actually forgot to keep the panel of surface scatter open. So let's click on that. Let's go all the way down, vertex color, red. And I will just do remove. Let's see if there's something off here. Paint the vertex channel, and then this one off. It should be painting the color. That's kind of weird. Let's check all of them and then difference. Apply to all level of details. And there might be a slight thing off here, but it works. Oh, let me see the comments. Click your OBS settings. Cursor. Aha, uh -huh. the cursor is not visible. Um, I would tweak the OBS settings, but probably not uh, during the live stream. So uh, you'll have to excuse the cursor uh, bug. But yeah, you can vertex paint on any. I'm going to double check this one. Kind of a weird uh, thing to come up. And uh, the next thing that I wanted to uh, cover was a shrink mask. Now, the actually, this feature, we built it uh, specifically because this user, uh, Tom Mooney, requested some time ago that he had like a table and he had scattered some objects on top of it, but he only wanted to keep things on top and then remove things at the edges. And uh, there was no obvious way of covering that. I I'll actually show you exactly what uh, the workflow looks like. So if we type table here, we're just going to load a cool, well, Metascan doesn't have a cool table. Well, whatever. I'll put this one over here. Let me get that down.
Okay. So, um, yeah, sorry about that. So we have our table here. I'm just going to scale it up and then hit enter. And uh, I'll type here, like, uh, you know what? I'll just put some grass, scatter on selected. And uh, let's collapse this. We can close that one. As you can see, we have a couple of plants scattered all over. As we increase the other parameters, I'll just decrease these two and uh, boost this to something like that. So you have all of this, you have this vegetation at the bottom. If you want to only keep uh, what's at the top here, there's a couple of things that you can do. The first one would be the angle mask parameter. So just put it to a low value like 35 and it does the job really nicely. There are cases where you may be scattering on a rock and the angle is not so obvious, but you, you want to have like a clear cut um, kind of a shape for your scatter. I'll just move that over there and show you. And uh, let's do that as the scatter. So right now this is because the angle is really low. Let's set it to 90. And what you can do instead is use the minimum height mask to just cut it from the bottom up. And you can also do the opposite to cut it from the top instead, uh, leaving you with this kind of nice uh, ring. So there's a couple of options there. But the shrink mask, if we select this one, <clears throat> and we set the angle mask to 35 or 30, uh, the shrink mask, the reason why it's useful is that you have the whole surface covered and you literally just want to shrink it like that. So it's under uh, feature masking. You can click on the search icon here and just type shrink. And we should see it here. And then if I start dragging the property, you're going to see, uh -huh. yeah, if the surface is too thin, you're going to have some weird artifacts. And uh, the, the, the way basically it works is just some proximity magic. And uh, it's, it'll basically cut the borders. Let me increase that carefully for you. Or see if I can try it on this guy. Well, this is kind of a weird one, actually. I did not expect that. Uh, where is the shrink again? Yeah, there you go. So you effectively have kind of the scatter mask expanding and contracting. And uh, the, the goal uh, behind it is really, as I said, to make sure that you can uh, reduce the coverage of your uh, mask. Actually, this and you stack angle masks? Uh, good question. I think you could, um, it depends. So for one scatter, if you're only scattering this vegetation right here, uh, you can't have like multiple, say I wanna have a 90 degrees and then I wanna have a 40 degrees and then do a difference between them or add remove type of layer based operation. Uh, that's something we have been meaning to do for a long time, but it's not there yet. Uh, what you do have access to when you scatter multiple uh, object is you, you can give each one of them kind of a different uh, angle. And so you could end up in a scenario where this is the first scatter pass and then you have a smaller one that goes slightly beyond that and then another one that goes slightly beyond that and so on and so forth. So yeah, you can definitely, uh, I would say almost like stack different objects and give them different uh, scatter masks. Yeah. And uh, kind of the last uh, feature in Surface Scatter that I wanted to highlight was uh, this one. So let's hope nothing weird happens this time. I have the Raycast Mesh. I'm going to set this one as that. So the idea behind the Raycast Mesh is exactly what it says. You have a mesh, you have all your grass scattered at the bottom, and it basically literally shoots a ray from here upwards and if it hits the table it gets to keep it now the use cases are many folds uh, number one if you were to have for example a car or something in a post-apocalyptic environment it's fairly common to want to have some vegetation and whatnot under it and this is literally just a one-click operation you go to feature mask 
raycast meshes you hit you select your uh, car or whatever hit plus and then it's going to do its job uh, just uh, fine and of course you can do the rotation whatever steps it's always going to kind of uh, keep uh, the shape of the object in consideration and whatnot so really cool uh, feature describe us yeah, the, the 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 scenario with the layered uh, workflow, Tyler. I know that uh, coming from uh, I think it was World Creator, the terrain tool. That is definitely something that you you will miss in uh, Dash. And uh, I hope uh, we're starting to do some work on Dash at a fundamental level. That should enable us to have like a layer based approach. So right now you have these kind of uh, like proximity mask one, proximity mask two, proximity mask three. And the reason why is because we don't have a layer system. But ideally, you wouldn't even have like 90% of these properties wouldn't exist. The surface would be, uh, the tool would be really small. And then you would just have like a plus button here or at the bottom where all these groups would be actual layers and you could move them up and down and then you'd have maybe a blending mode icon over there so that's definitely something that we've been uh, thinking about trying to do here and there uh, but yeah we're starting to understand uh, what to do with the core architecture of the software to make that happen um, let me just i forget to give myself some background music here and uh, let's go back over there so this feature really really cool uh, the other one uh, with the kind of the shrinking bug I actually just remember a colleague of mine had told me Adnan that bug is gonna appear <laughs> and I did not believe him so yeah I, I stand corrected Balu if you're uh, listening to the live stream uh, the next one is the uh, brand new materials and if I select this rock I'll just uh, move it over there and I'll close this panel and I'll click on the material icon so first of all you have a snow property here if you just check that well you're gonna have snow and there's some basic uh, settings here like you can control how sharp the uh, transition between the snow and the rest of the surface is uh, let me run the nanite mode one and column zero just some unreal engine flags and you can also control the slope to kind of adjust the growth of the of the snow and uh, the uh, kind of what uh, the next step that we're working on uh, probably between 1.4 and 1.5 uh, would be to give you first you have the shader snow which gives you the soft transition second you have actual geometry snow on top which gives you a really cool uh, material effect and uh, kind of I guess slight announcement of a 1.3 upcoming feature would be we have triplanar mapping in the works and uh, what that will give you is you can take any texture applied on any mesh and you're gonna have a seamless texturing with uh, whether your mesh has UVs or whatever and with that we're gonna be able to have snow and other effects uh, without uh, you know worrying about having the perfect UVs for snow which is a very uh, complicated shape because it's so many blobs of geometry and whatnot so you have this basic setup yeah you control the roughness the normal and all the other uh, base uh, settings uh, we also have displacement and yeah this one is basically just displacement as you know it and uh, you can adjust the parameter if your mesh has a displacement of course if it doesn't uh, you can just edit the displacement in the materials uh, tab for mega scan assets they all have displacements so i'll just take the range here and increase that as you can see with the shape oops, oops, just close that by accident let's go back i'll disable my snow yeah the shape of the mesh back to lit mode the shape of the mesh basically takes all the details like that for you and uh it's pretty cool and again, it, it just works. So you set your value to zero or you set it to one and you call it a day. Um, we also kind of uh, improved a couple of things in this editing panel itself. Uh, first of all, if you're using the older versions of Dash, you probably remember the long and really annoying floating uh, 
kind of bars where you had to adjust the sliders and they would overlap on top of each other's and blah 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 all of that is gone you just get your asset in the scene and uh, like this for example and then if you let's close that if you were to select this asset and click on this uh, icon it's just gonna reload the panel with this asset kind of uh, being the one you're controlling but I can go back to the snow I'll just uh, do that and then I can start adjusting whatever like maybe I'm gonna mess up with the tiling parameter and the roughness and whatever settings I can go back here and hit reset and I'm gonna get all the base settings again uh, by uh, default best thing though I could select two objects click on this parameter go here hit reset it's gonna reset all the properties then I can go back and adjust say the uh, saturation for the two objects or as many as I want and this comes in really handy when you have a relatively complex scene with a bunch of different objects and you just want to batch edit uh, their properties so you can reset here which is the global reset or you can right click on any arbitrary property and hit reset and it's gonna reset the uh, value there as well and so uh, next I'm gonna go to the panel again a brand new cable tool yeah this this one is really really cool there's also the road tool that we're gonna cover and a bunch of other things so how do we cover the cable tool well we're gonna create this object we're gonna scale it down let's actually reduce the camera speed to one and since Unreal, we're not using vertex painting anymore, I'll just go full screen. Unreal is a bit slower than usual today, so if uh, it's if it's a bit laggy, uh, please uh, let me know. I'll just create like three objects like that. And I'll move that one over there. And then I'll just type uh, cable or able. And the first suggestion is going to be the cable tool. You click on it. And this is our guy. Um, let's select this one and then add it in the object list and then this one object list and then this one object list. Now the first thing you'll notice is oh wow Adnan this is great except nothing's happening and that's because the mode is set to curves. This tool allows you to create cables uh, through multiple modes. First one is curves, second one is objects, and the second we switch to that, you're gonna see your cables. And the third one is scatter. And the second you see that, you're gonna see this. Now, uh, the, if you've used the tool cable bundle before, uh, this guy, you'll probably notice, you know what, I could, I could do this, like give it uh, mesh A and then mesh B. Oh yeah, because Unreal and Duplicate don't work uh, as well together. And, uh, you know, I could do my thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, first of all, it had weird issues, the, the tool cable tool, like now where it doesn't work in runtime. But most importantly, though, the uh, problem that we had with it was that it was just very limited and very slow. And you only had this workflow mesh A and mesh B. And the cool thing with this new tool is that I don't know why the tools just decided to tell me and then we're not gonna do this anymore I think it's because I duplicated Unreal meshes manually so what I'll do uh, just one sec I'll open my content browser I'll type a uh, rock I'll drag and drop this one and then I'll hit enter drag and drop that one I'll hit enter that sometimes when you duplicate a mesh in Unreal internally it it doesn't seem to understand that this is not the same mesh and that can result in some weird uh, behaviors with uh, dash. So let's do that and then select all of them, move them up. We have our three cables. I can select this guy, move it around. And as you can see, the cable updates nicely. I can switch the mode to scatter and we have this really cool effect. And uh, uh, although usually I tend to just stick to like objects and what I do next is we have this property called duplicate. It's basically going to duplicate the pipes as many times as you want. And you also have the ability to adjust the tilting so to make it like thicker or not thicker. And if you were to go to the mode again and change it to scatter, it's going to set the duplicate to zero for you before doing the scatter because scatter is, it has its own uh, density parameter uh, basically. 
and uh, you can still do you know I want to scatter them like that and then I want to duplicate the ones that I've already scattered if if uh, that's your vibe <laughs> and uh, I'll just increase the gravity max over here so you have the controls you can give it as many meshes as you want you also have the really cool property here called cut rate and this will basically introduce like cut uh, cables along it if I go to details and increase the max length I can change that value fairly easily. Um, another thing that comes with 1.2 uh, is that right now the slider, the maximum is 1. I can select the text and set it, let's cancel the save, set it to something like uh, 2 and it's going to override the maximum value for you. And uh, yeah, so that's also pretty cool. And next I'll go here and uh, have this connection rate property let's just look at it like that and if I increase the connection rate it's basically gonna create cables that are interconnected between the other cables and first of all for urban environments this is incredibly practical uh, you can very easily create like poles or any type of structure uh, like put this thing behind a wall and this one behind another wall and then just have your uh, shapes uh, scattering cables all over and if I scale this parameter, I can have like a thicker connection over there. Uh, you could have like a tower that has all sorts of cables connected, kind of like what you see with games like The Ascent. Is it possible to merge two object meshes? Uh, this is a question by uh, Satish. And uh, you know what? I The answer is yes. Unreal has a way of doing it. If I remember correctly, we do. I don't know if we've shipped it just yet. Uh, no, we did not ship it uh, just yet. But yeah, there is a way of merging in Unreal. I don't recall how, but uh, what I'll do is for Dash 1.3, uh, which is getting released next week, I'll make sure that we have the... So you should just be able to select two meshes and type merge, and it's gonna merge them and create a static mesh for you and be done with it. Uh, so yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, you have your different cables, you're like, okay, this looks cool. Next thing that I can type is type here like a surface. And I may, for example, drag and drop. Uh, let's see, this one perhaps. And the UVs are a bit kind of eh, so let's uh, select the parameter over there. and. Yeah, you don't have control over the UVs here unless we uncheck the normalize, in which case you have like a really crazy uh, tiling. Yeah, the tiling is really crazy on this one. Uh, let's go here and I'll just reset property. And if I were to lower the tiling like quite a bit, you'll start noticing the results kind of getting better there. Um, this is a nice one uh, we're gonna fix and uh, however I will say the, the, the exciting thing about this bug uh, for me is when you in 1.3 again coming next week when you control drag a surface you now have the ability to apply a triplanar material on it instead which just gives you much much better uh, results so you know, you have your really cool vines or whatever, you can select them and go here, type 3D plant. And if I were to pick uh, just some arbitrary plant that remotely looks like some vines, I don't know. Like, yeah, this will do. And I'll just scatter on selected. So now we have a few plants that are scattered on our surface. We can set the density here to like 8. And... Uh, yeah, there you have it. Really, really thick, perhaps too uh, bright in the color. I'll adjust that. Uh, let's go reset property. Okay, the properties are all good. Let's just darken it quite a bit and lower the brightness. And then what I'll do next is I can play with the scale. I can actually set the angle max to 180 because it's not everywhere. Like at the bottom of the pipe, you don't have the ropes uh, the vegetation are being scattered so you have this really cool structure and what you have here is like one of the things that we were going to be optimizing and working towards more and more in dash it's multiple tools working together 
uh, you have one tool that is using the rocks to create the pipes and another tool that is using the pipes to create the vegetation and if you move one of them it's going to update the other uh, there are some performance kind of slow down here and there we know where they are they're going to be fixed next week in 1.3 and uh yeah, so with this feature, uh, one thing kind of uh, that I'm really excited about A is getting back to the dailies because I haven't done some in a while and B also using this actually to do more vine uh, kind of dense uh, themes uh, than I'm uh, used to. Let me just actually do a quick uh, thing here to the rocks. Uh, just had a, an idea, it may just work. Oh, I have some plants scattered on top. I'll just increase the density. Oop, not too much. I'll also set this one to like uh, 130 perhaps. And I can select the vegetation as always. Click on the material setting. Lower, uh, deselect the vegetation. Lower the brightness if I want to. And then you have yourself, uh, that's kind of a loading issue on the asset itself you have yourself a really cool setup where again so many dynamic systems are interacting uh, with each other and uh, yeah really cool feature a uh, special shout out to uh, Costantino my colleague for uh, helping me kind of debug and actually make it work uh, nicely and uh, what else on this feature yeah you can go here at the bottom there's an output group and you can decide that, you know what, I'm gonna output curves instead of actual meshes. So perhaps, you know, that's all you wanna do from the tool. You just wanna create curves. It's just one checkbox away. Um, you also have other parameters like, uh, uh, what do you call it again? The uh, scatter options here. Uh, since we are doing scatter in the scatter mode here, you have a couple of things here like max length for how long basically you want certain cables to be uh, you also have kind of self scatter which pretty much does uh, what it says the uh, objects the cables sorry are gonna scatter cables on one another and then you have these longer uh, connection uh, types so really cool feature uh, again you can do so much stuff uh, on it realistic cable stuff in a cave and whatnot uh, you can do vines on it uh, lots of other uh, different objects you can finally buy a license not just rent yes actually uh, I was gonna cover that later but now that you brought it up um, let me check the comments to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Yes, cables upon cables upon cables. You know what? You can literally... Uh, okay, I'm going to try something. Uh, the computer may crash. Uh, you know the meme. Some of you may die, <laughs> but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. The computer may crash, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. What I'll do is I have the cables. They're scattered. All good. I'll just type cable again, and uh, I'll open the cable tool. I'll just move these over and I'll also delete the vegetation here because yeah what I'm about to do may be really really heavy uh, so if there's a crash it's just it, it is what it is um, so let's check this we're gonna feed cables to another cable tool and uh, I don't know which one we're gonna go with I think we're gonna go with uh, scatter and that will create for us some cables we can barely see them yet Let's increase and decrease the, uh, what do you call it again, the gravity to see it. Uh, we have the max length on the scatter here. I'll just reduce that like quite a bit. And yeah, they're barely noticeable. Uh, I think perhaps I need to play with some more settings here. Uh, scatter density, there they are. All our friends are right here. And then I can add duplicates three of them yeah this is cool <laughs> look at this small cables here like tiny cables and then I can increase the uh, the tilt and you got yourself this really really cool shape almost like a spider web or something like uh, uh, I don't know if you guys remember in the I can't remember if it was in the Lord of the Ring or the Hobbit uh, I think it was in the Hobbit uh, you have this scene where um, 
uh, Bilbo falls into this huge spider net and you have these vines and also spider nets and whatnot. And uh, yeah, this this could be really cool. Performance though, you know, it is it is what it is. Uh, what we're doing here is quite heavy, uh, but this performance is like vanilla stuff. It's, we are working on fixing it and uh, uh, our engineers uh, are already uh, showing some really cool uh, promising optimization. So yeah, definitely one of my fe uh, favorite features for this uh, release. Let's see. Yes, Tomb Raider game, definitely. I can buy a license, not just rent. Yes, uh, ding ding ding, kind of announcement for everyone here. We now ship a perpetual license. So when you go to the Polygon Flow front page, you click on download the dash free trial you have all these options you have monthly six dollars if you're a student okay. and then you have this one if you're just just a, a guy or a girl and then you have this one enterprise if you're a studio uh, this is the monthly then you have the annual and voila you have the holiday special which is the perpetual license now there's a few things to keep in mind about this license first of all uh, it's obviously forever, uh, so you just buy it now, you're gonna get uh, 12 months of maintenance, so you'll be getting all the updates that we're gonna be shipping in the next 12 months, and you'll be getting support for all the Unreal Engine versions that are gonna be shipping in the next uh, 12 months. And uh, after that, we have no idea how we're gonna handle it. Perhaps we're gonna create like a top-up uh, program where if, for example, next year Epic releases Epic uh, UE 5.0, 5.5 uh, and 5.6 and then there's 5.7 release in 2025 uh, and you bought the license like in January you won't have access to dash or 5.7 in that case and what we're thinking about is we could create a top-up plan uh, we, we have a couple of options that we want to do however the reason why we mentioned that it's a holiday special is because we want to try it out and see how enthusiastic people are about this. So if we see that this is working out nicely, we're going to keep it. Everyone's happy. Uh, and by working out nicely, I mean for you, the user, you're happy about it and you're buying it. For us, Polygon Flow, we're happy about it and we're getting money. Everyone's happy. If that's the case, perfect. If a scenario like that doesn't happen, we're gonna have to mitigate. Like it's gonna be okay. Let's uh, uh, like everyone that buys it now will keep it. They're gonna get all their 12 months, and then they keep it forever. It's a regular perpetual license. And after say like uh, December, perhaps we're not gonna be offering it for future people anymore or something. So. If you're interested in Dash, uh, I think most importantly, if you're interested in supporting small developers that just want to make uh, world building a better place, uh, please support us. Uh, whether you want to do it through the Perpetual or the subscription, it's up to you. Uh, but just, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to make a decision, make it now to let us know basically whether this was a, a good idea. Um, okay, let's minimize this panel again. And we've covered this tool quite a bit, and I'll go back to uh, the panel. The cable tool and path scatter 2.0. Oh boy, this one is good. Let's close those, and then I'll type uh, path. I'll open path scatter 2.0. Actually, we're gonna hide this one um, in the coming version. So this one works with curves, and what I'll do is I'll just type draw, and I'll draw myself. Uh, Ah, that, 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 that looks ugly. I'll draw myself a cool curve like that. And I'll give it the curve. Obviously, I don't have any meshes uh, that I've scattered so far. And I can select this rock. Why not? I'll just feed it the rock here. And that's going to be my scatter. I have the density and all the different parameters. Another thing that you can do, which is even faster, is uh, you open your content browser. Uh, let's say you type like wood 3d and um, let's find these let's find the boys where are they there they are so you control drag and scatter here you select the curve in the in the Unreal Engine viewport and then you drag and drop something from the dash content browser scatter on selected and then it's gonna do its magic 
you have the scatter done, uh, we just need to set the angle override to 0 0.9, which is 90 degrees, basically. Uh, we can increase like the parameters here. Uh, of course, I can always just type like 5 and then 5 here. And uh, yeah, so this is your cable. It has all the parameters of the old uh, cable tool. Ooh, this looks gnarly. Uh, that's because of the displacement. I think the default range is off. Um, so if I were to set this to like 1, um, it would look correct. There you go. Not only correct, it would actually have all the small details that are really uh, cool. Uh, all right, let's close that one and delete this one. So I have my nice kind of uh, path over here. The first thing that I can do is just check this spin and it's going to spin pretty self-explanatory. Then I can do straighten and it's going to straighten the uh, curve. This is if your curves is on like a, a mountainous uh, shape. So on this flat surface, it's not going to do much. Smooth instead is what you would check if you want to uh, soften the, the curve. So we can do that a little bit here. Uh, we can sync the curve, like up or down. Uh, again, you can just type 10 here, like whatever, or negative 10. And there are your uh, scattered objects. And then we have this parameter. Actually, let's select this one. I'll delete this, and I'll delete the curve, and I'll select the curve here. I know your curves are really hard to select, man. And then I'll move this around like the center, and I'll get a bit closer and I'll adjust the width and that'll give me like this nice uh, path and uh, I can just adjust it to whatever. Now the really cool thing, first I'll soften the path a bit here uh, because I had some weird intersection issues. You have the width but if you've used dash before, you know, the, we've had that parameter, it's no big deal. Now you have other parameters. The first one is uh, keep center. So imagine, for example, that you are creating a medieval path or something where uh, there are like uh, uh, chariots that are passing and you usually have like a lane and there's a streak in the middle and you want to have some objects scattered in the middle and at the borders. This is basically just a checkbox away. And something else that is really cool is you can also have like multiple sides. So yeah, just pick this with sides and drag it as you see fit and you have all these different uh, parameters and everything is always is parametric and everything uh, because we have absolutely amazing engineers uh, love you guys if you're <laughs> listening to the live stream everything also is uh, really really fast so you have all these parameters let's just lower that yeah this looks cool and uh, then you have the more regular stuff like uh, the seed if you want to randomize the random properties of a tool you also have the jittering uh, if you want to create like a really cool, uh, uh, almost like a abstract uh, type shapes over there. And obviously scale as well. You can uh, jitter that parameter. Uh, you can relax the rotation. This is also one of those properties that is more relevant if your shape, uh, and by shape, I mean like your ground or whatever, uh, is not uh, flat. Oh, actually, speaking of ground, let's type terrain and create a terrain. I'll select the curve and do I even need to move it up? I'll just close this. I don't think I need to. Uh, just one sec. F surface, I'll add that. And then everything just aligns really, really nicely on the terrain. And if I select the curve and then I drag it, and this is one of those really cool effects, it's just gonna slide on the surface, as you can see. And even if the curve is like, some of the points are literally at the bottom. That just does not matter. Uh, we understand what you want to do <laughs> and we're making it happen. That's our motto. And uh, you also have this property here called uh, slice. It pretty much does what it says, uh, slicing the curve. Sometimes you may draw the curve, it may go out of bounds or whatever, uh, the scatter story. And we're going to handle that for you with this property. Um, if you had, let's select this, this one over here, this rock, and scale it. If you had some proximity objects, you add that over there, and then you increase this one, perhaps you want to invert it, then you've got yourself a really cool path. And uh, we can drag that at the bottom or whatever, adjust this setting, and there you have it. So also one of the really cool tools that uh, come in this uh, release, a small feature that is coming in the next version, uh, 
1.3 is right now when I make the curve the pivot is quite far I can just type like a center and I'm gonna have this feature center pivot I've yet to try it on curves I know that works on meshes so if it works good if it doesn't just know that you're gonna have an action where you can type center pivot bottom pivot uh, top pivot and whatnot so I need to then reselect it and there you go the pivot now is centered and uh, with regards to the bottom pivot top pivot and so on literally just go here type like bottom up, up. let's just type bottom and now the pivot is at the bottom and uh, you can scale it really nicely so uh, one of those small utility tools that is uh, incredibly uh, useful uh, before I check the list let's see here okay take all my blessed money well send me all your blessed money I'm gonna bless it even more Yeah, it's in the name Polygon Flow. Uh, yeah, kind of the, the the origin of the behind the name of the company was uh, uh, first of all Polygon because this is the entirety of our industry, and Flow was there's this book by a Hungarian uh, writer called uh, Mihai Shiksent Mihai called Flow. Really recommended. It. it basically talk about the state of Flow, and he was the guy back in the 90s who established this that you know you need to have your own state of flow and how you want to focus on it and how you can get it back more efficiently and whatnot and uh, that's the point behind the uh, polygon flow is we want to make sure that you can create your polygon flows your polygon <laughs> while in the zone that is so cringy <laughs> let's move on <laughs> let's move on to the next feature i mean uh displacement uh we've covered it snow we've covered it wind we've yet to cover that so what better way to do it than first dragging and dropping a surface on our terrain give it a second uh, the tiling is this surface is ugly jesus christ uh surface actually let me mm, which one am i gonna put again yeah the tile i'm gonna set it to five that looks cool and uh next so we were talking about wind, so let's type 3D plant and I will add some plants that have obvious animation. Ferns tend to have that and uh, I'll just scatter them. It's going to take a couple of seconds to uh, load that. Oh, that was faster than I thought it would be. So uh, you have your 3D plants here. I'll just increase their size color is kind of terrible as well uh, the default color I mean like uh, let's boost the contrast there's this weird bug actually that I found out a couple of days ago where the sliders on the materials are really slow so if you encounter that uh, just know that uh, we're looking into it so we have that all good now in the if we select the plants and we open the materials settings of the plants we have the wind group over here and if we check that it's gonna load a little bit and then it's gonna enable wind and tada you have your wind you can control the speed you can control the intensity and yeah it's good old wind nothing crazy magical about it uh we are however working on some really cool uh effects for wind our uh programmer uh Badu, has been working on some pretty cool features here so what you have is you can effectively uh, select your instances and you can randomize their color for example so if your shader has like a color variation or you're uh, lurping between uh, two different colors you can very easily just propagate those changes with this tool um, like give it uh, the workflow would be you select your instances you add them in here like the panel above here and then you have automatically uh you can use random noise and even proximity to drive the intensity of your wind for example so if uh you had oh, let's give the save a moment if you had for example the wind uh perhaps there are some rocks around here and this is a huge cliff and it stops the wind or whatever you can ensure that anything that's close to it the wind is really uh the intensity is really low and as you go further it goes higher and higher um 
until it reaches a threshold that you want it to reach. Same thing with colors as well. You can do random noise, like right now it's extremely uniform as you can see, the, the firms. And with that feature you're going to be able to randomize uh, different colors. Uh, you should also be able to literally just go, you know what, this rock, maybe it's like the, the dead rock of Mordor or whatever, and all the plants that are near it get darker because whatever, and uh, that's an effect that you can do. Uh, first, we're going to make sure that we give you the right materials to make that happen. And second, we're going to give this uh, feature to you. Um, I'm not. I don't think this one's going to be coming next week. Probably in uh, two weeks after uh, next week. <clears throat> yeah, right now in 1.2 you can't. In the upcoming feature uh, that we're working on, which is this one, you'll be able to randomize the noise. Like in a really cool. If you've seen or played Ghost of Tsushima, this is exactly how you're going to be able to randomize it. Like a nice waves and what have you. You could even draw a curve on your landscape and say, I want everything near the curve to have intense uh, wind, for example. <clears throat> Sorry, and uh, yeah, uh, this wind parameter really, really cool. Uh, I'll just uh, clean up the scene a little bit, just so we have some space. What do we have next? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Simple surface material. Uh, this one, it's literally just what the name says. There is a, <laughs> a simple surface material. I don't know how better to describe it, uh, basically this base surface material that we now ship. Um, w we, uh, well, uh, yeah, we, we didn't have the time to refine the workflow around it. The idea is just to give you a very easy base PBR surface that has some details like roughness details and perhaps a little bit of normal detail that you can sometimes just slap left and right and have some cool effects but I want to make sure that we work a little bit more on it so that it's uh, like you have an action you can select something and then you just type simple surface or PBR or whatever and then it's gonna apply that uh, for you so it's it's in the works um, uh, but for now it is you can already use that uh, material a uh, new camera tool, yep, yes indeed, let's type new, create that, and yeah, we have the camera over here, the next step is you click on the camera parameter, and you have all these different parameters, so this is the new camera tool, uh, you can control the focal length very very easily, uh, you can control the aperture, also very, oh, this is where I really want to go to the path tracer action, and uh, where the lighting is also kind of meh. Yeah, the, this one is like something going on with the path tracing. I guess I'll just stick to Nanite for now. And uh, yeah, you have control over there. You have like uh, base features like uh, Bloom. Let's press G over there. Um, just one sec. I think perhaps I understood what the problem was. No, I didn't understand what the problem was. And uh, Fringe and all the other different parameters. Uh, film Grain also is now available, so we can just increase that uh, very very easily and uh, sharpen our good old sharpen is over here uh, shadow contrast these are two new features that we've exposed in this version they really help you get the kind of details of the environment to pop out uh, more uh, also you can kind of like uh, soften or brighten the shadows really noticeable around here and um, what else what else yeah cycle LUT our good old friend, always here. <clears throat> and uh, da, 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 da. let's just reduce this value because it's too much. And then actually I'll just right click reset, right click reset. There you go. And yeah, I mean, Cycle LHC, if you've used the old version of Dash, it's really, really cool feature. It just allows you to quickly preview different uh, color grading systems. And uh, you have the focal length, uh, focal distance, sorry, that you can adjust. For the uh, for the blur, so let's just tweak that like that, and then get ourselves a really cool look over here. And then uh, you also have control over the temperature, and finally the tint. So we really exposed a whole bunch of parameters here to just make it easier um, to get an end result. Uh, I think if you sharpen is nice, temporal it, it tends to blur all the textures. The road creation, uh, yes, uh, Hugo, I'm going to showcase that. Uh, 
uh, Satish, basically all the meshes that you import from our content browser will automatically have Nanite applied on them by default. Like you literally don't need to do anything. Just drag and drop something. And it has Nanite. That's it. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, so, one thing that uh, we had over in the previous live streams, like if you check these two live streams, I always go to the end and I open DaVinci Resolve and I do some final post processing and color adjustment and whatnot. And that's something, uh, it's cool, I love DaVinci Resolve, but uh, you know, it's better if you can do everything in Unreal Engine. And the way I want you to think about Dash is not, oh, this is cool, I can scatter. It's everything, you know, I can open Unreal, I can go full screen, I can go from a plane the base environment all the way to the end result and so we're putting a lot of work into the camera kind of a tool over here to give you more and more settings more and more parameters just so that you can do every single thing uh, in here so if i were to actually i had one more thing to show you if i were to select the camera uh, this is for the upcoming version of uh, dash uh, let's open that uh, this one is, I'll just close all the different panels, and do I have, uh, let me just do this as well, oh, no, not that one, tone map before, after, yeah, I'll close this, just one sec, yeah, you now have barrel distortion or lens distortion, and uh, you can have this really cool effect, basically, like, uh, oh, don't stretch that one. Just enable invert and it's going to do the opposite for you, like that. So we are working kind of on improving more and more the quality of uh, your final result effectively. And this is kind of the first steps, just basic camera setups. We also are exposing some really cool features here, like uh, stylized outlines. I don't know if this is the... I think I didn't open the right one, so let me... Uh, Go back. I have the camera selected. I'll just uh, this is the tone map before, which is what I want. I'll open that and I'll enable these two. Actually, let me also just increase the aperture to have less stuff, and I'll clear my image with less uh, no film grain. Or is the film grain refusing to go? Yeah, there you go. All right, so. Uh, I can increase the intensity and it should, if it wasn't playing with me, it should give us kind of a really cool uh, stylized effect. Um, yeah, you can notice it over the shape right there. Uh, I think there's some weird kind of update thing going on with the viewport itself. Um, if I open the other tool, and lower the parameters that that should fix it uh, for now so let's uh oh no i'm real what are you doing let's just uh play with these settings yeah you can see it over here like how it's making like the shape stylized like uh the controls it's kind of weird uh, i think here you can see the effect much easier and uh, the idea behind it, yeah, it's pretty simple, just introducing more of these cartoon-like uh, effects and in the future, ex uh, kind of expanding on it more and more and more until it looks uh, really cool. Uh, for now, it's a little bit eh, uh, in the viewport, I mean, but this is coming uh, in a future version. It's not available just yet in 1.2, if you have a Dash 1.2. Uh, yes, as Ilgar said, uh, Fisheye, also available. So, um, ba -ba -ba, let's see. We're almost uh, past the time. Uh, simple surface camera tool, visibility volume. Guys, I cannot stress it enough. This tool is amazing. Um, so I'll just duplicate this object. I'll scale it down. And uh, let's say, for example, you had a scene with, uh, you know, if you have like an interior scene, not everything's gonna be instances and whatnot. Like uh, you're often gonna have uh, instancers and regular static meshes and what have you and so what we did with a new tool called visibility volume uh, just call that 
Visibility Volume or Vod, Calling Volume. It'll basically create a cube for you. And uh, you can see, like, uh, I hope the compression makes it visible. It's this cube over here, and you can use it to hide objects very, very easily. So imagine just putting it in some corner where you know I'm not going to be working in this kind of part of my level for the next couple of hours or whatever. So let me just like hide that and I'll keep the rest. So really, really cool uh, feature. If you're coming from uh, uh, Hammer, which is the editor for um, kind of all the Valve uh, games, this is a very, very uh, useful feature in there. And uh, you can also do intersection. So anything it intersects with, it's just gonna hide that. Uh, in this case, it intersects with the terrain, it's gonna hide that as well. Um, but let's keep it to inside. You can also just disable it um, or enable it or whatever. Um, so pretty cool, uh, kind of a small scale uh, tool, but still really, really practical. And when you delete it, it makes everything visible um, again. So uh, advanced materials that support terrain blending, that is planned for 1.3 which we're gonna ship next week. Uh, you're gonna have the ability to blend like uh, three different surfaces and you'll also be able to blend water. We already ship, um, let me actually show it to you. It's called surface and I'll, uh... so this is an object and the object has its UVs and all the challenges that come with it. You can drag and drop the surface and apply triplanar. This is only in the new version of Dash that is coming soon. So it's not available in the public version yet. And it's gonna create a triplanar shader. And the special thing about this is that it has no UVs. Uh, like you can apply it on anything and it's just gonna look good. Um, so if we open the parameters, you have the triplanar settings and we can control the scale over, the, over here. Just reduce that like quite a bit or go upwards and uh, there you go you have a really cool shape here and if you duplicate it like there's no repetition on the seams and all that type of different uh, weird issues that you would get with objects that don't have UVs so this is the first kind of step that we did recently it's just let's shape a tribal inner shader and the second one is let's give you actually a three-way blend uh, material uh, so we have a lot of things in the works on the material uh, space for the couple of uh, next couple of weeks and then the month of january as well after the christmas uh, break okay what else do we have on the release uh, visibility revamped ui i mean this is just you know the weird draggable panel and a couple of other adjustments the ability to reset batch properties uh, a lot of things that we've covered in this uh, uh, live stream so far undoable blah 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 resetable that one we've covered that as well property range overridable you can select on any range and type whatever value you want we covered uh that and uh dense primitive we've covered that roadmap is now public uh actually speaking of road the road tool is here, ladies and gentlemen, and it is not here to play. Let's just delete all of that. I'll type draw, hit enter, just draw curve. Let's close this, let's close that. Let's type road, click on the create road tool, hit plus, and uh, it created a road. Now, you may not believe me, uh, but trust me, it created a road. So what uh, what you have basically is these controls. I think the did I actually? Aha! Never mind. Never mind. And then sometimes it's just not the sharpest tool in the shed. There you go. It created a road. There you have it. So you have this, and you can select the surface and add it, and it's gonna nicely project it for you. There's some kind of artifacts here and there, and you can just play with the sync parameter to move the road like up or down and uh, it's literally that simple just give it a curve uh, give it the surface that you want to project we sync the UVs uh, the vertices at the border quite nicely into the surface and then from there it's like all right you can you know it's time to have fun you can just drag and drop the surface and uh, start adjusting I think the UV scale parameter was one that we could adjust 
and you have your really cool uh, road. One thing that we have on top of this tool, but that we, uh, I don't think we shipped it like nicely. I think that's a way of putting it is, there are vertex colors that will enable you to kind of make the borders invisible. That way you have a softer transition, but um, we're gonna rework on that to just make it much uh, better. But yeah, uh, the road is there. You can always select it and move the curve around and it's just gonna nicely conform to your uh, terrain. I mean, look at that, it's just beautiful. There you go. Ain't that wonderful? And we can scale the curve. Yep. If it goes out of bounds, it's gonna start acting weird. So just uh, keep that a little bit, keep that kinda in mind. Yeah, if it goes out of bounds, it definitely acts weird. There you go, there's our curve. Just scale it down and then do that. And yeah, you get the idea. Really, really cool uh, addition in this new uh, release. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do with it. And uh, I'm also looking forward to using it for more uh, dailies. And uh, what do we have last? The roadmap, I think, for the... I covered it briefly in the last live stream. But yeah, we have a roadmap right here and you can visit it it has everything you need to know about what this company is up to let me put it in the comments and uh there's everything uh you know the uh, editing light panel that's something that we want to have so just like you can edit the camera very easily you should be able to edit your lighting material panel we've released that the physics panel uh, we have that tool panel yes hdri generation this is a big one that's in the work uh right now we ship about 30 i think uh color grading presets we want to work on a lot more volumetric fog is not there yet we want to ship it for 1.2 uh, 1.3 sorry so next week and uh object tagging pretty big and all these different features uh, i think far to go on like our github uh, page this is our current uh, target for dash one point uh Three, again coming out next week uh, we fixed a couple of issues surface scatter is gonna have some really cool features um, like this one the, if you have a noise you're gonna be able to scale it on a specific uh, dimension basically so you could create like fields and other really cool uh, effects uh, like man-made uh, scatter uh, natural scatter objects uh, so that one is pretty cool. Uh, normalized scale. This feature is uh, one of my most anticipated features. Um, the idea behind it is if you were to scatter some vegetation, for example, um, and some of your plants are big, other are small, you're going to be able to say rescale all of them either to match, uh, to match kind of the average scale so the plants, um, I think the better kind of easier way of highlighting it is just picking our dude, duplicating him and scaling him down. If you pick average, it's just going to pick the average of these two. So it would be something like, you know, just downscale this one a little bit and then upscale this one a little bit like that. And then that would be your average scale. If you were to go with uh, another mode like uh, this one, it would take the biggest one. So if this one was like huge, You'll go like, okay, take this object, conform it to the scale of that one. And this means sometimes when you d download assets from Megascan or other libraries, uh, you have different scales and whatnot. Just pick the scale mode and it's going to work. This is going to be available to you next week. Sk uh, per instance wind, uh, we're going to try to make it available next week. Uh, we're going to do our best. Um, this one is skeletal mesh. So if you wanted to scatter on a literal character, it could be a creature. That's also going to be possible. Um, cable tool, we have some things in the works, uh, pretty cool uh, fish eye and uh, uh, set pivot also, we've shipped this, you're gonna have access to it soon. Road tool, uh, I created this road and it's all great, but I think what would be cool is if I had like a, a parameter to create road strips, so just at the edge, and I can give them a decal and even one at the bottom and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, uh, we've really uh, put a lot of foundational work into uh, this coming version and what's going to come out of it is not just the features that you'll see next week but way 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 more so i think that covers all the overall features 
of uh, 1.2. I hope you have a better understanding of what they do and how you can use them to create uh, any type of environment you have in mind. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the live stream. Uh, dash to with dynamic mesh. Uh, thank you. Yes, the roadmap looks extremely amazing and uh, there's a lot of things that we've yet to showcase there. Does Dash have triplanar? Does that triplanar have masking and tiling value shift? Uh, tiling value shift. So uh, the triplanar, did I delete the object that has it? I'm just going to recreate it for you and uh, apply triplanar. And then I'll open the settings. So the current settings that we've exposed are the following. You have control over the scale. You have control over the transition sharpness. And if I were to zoom in, it's barely noticeable. Like, uh, actually, I don't know where the transition... Yeah, transition's here. No. <laughs> yeah, th there is a transition somewhere for the uh, triplanar shader here. And uh, yeah, you have control over how you want that sharp transition to be. As you can see, perhaps the effect is very obvious over there. And uh, you also have the ability to adjust the dithering of the uh, transition. Yeah, it's right here. It's extremely subtle, uh, but it is right there. Uh, so we don't have the ability to... Let me go back to your comments. <clears throat> we don't have the ability to uh, adjust the tiling uh, beyond the scale parameter, but uh, Tom, I know that you tend to be active on the Discord, so if you have kind of a reference of, you know, maybe you feel like it would be nice to have this or that property, you can just DM me those properties and I'll make sure that uh, we have them when we release uh, Dash. Okay, everyone, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Uh, feel free to take a look at the roadmap again look at the images look at the great art that you want to create a uh, great artist that you admire and just ask yourself uh, what's the challenge uh, workflow wise so there is the creative part that where you're always going to struggle until you get there but very often it's just regular boring you need to learn all these type of systems and uh, i think the best way for us to help you is for you to just you know join us on the discord and tell us you know what i always wanted to create environment of that type but i never figured out how to solve this or that aspect and let us know and then on our end we're going to think more deeply about how to solve those type of problems so that you can just open unreal engine go full screen and uh, do what you're meant to do which is creating beautiful art and with that said thank you everyone for coming and I'll wish you a fantastic week. Right, everyone? Adios. <clears throat> mm.